Happy Monday. I hope your day is going great. We have some beautiful weather today. I hope you're being able to enjoy it. Before we begin, just a couple of quick announcements. Don't forget that our Family Promise Hosting Week is June 21st through 28th. We are only providing meals, but last time I checked, we are still needing several people to help provide those meals. So if you can help, you can sign up online using the information found in the Friday email and also the Monday email that went out today. Also, don't forget that this coming Sunday, we will celebrate communion virtually. So to uh, you can go ahead and begin getting ready to participate, you and your family, by uh, gathering some bread or crackers, whatever you have, and some sort of juice. We will enjoy gathering at Christ's table this Sunday. And also, I know people are wondering, when will Ebenezer reopen? When will we begin to meet face-to-face -face again? We are anxiously awaiting word from our bishop and expecting that any day now, perhaps even today. So, uh, in the meantime, we are working on a reopening plan. So as soon as we have definite uh, definite word about when we will re-meet again, re -meet again, when we will meet again in person, uh, we will let you know. And uh, we are all looking forward to that. And we will share that information as soon as we have it. Well, as you know, we have been focusing on a verse from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. This was written by the Apostle Paul to his young protege, Timothy. And since we've been talking in our devotions about people who have struggled with fear, I thought it would be interesting to talk about this young man, Timothy, who inspired this verse that we have been focusing on recently about how God does not give us a spirit of fear or timidity, but of power and love and self-discipline. So what exactly do we know about this young man, Timothy? First of all, we always, almost always when we say his name, we say the word young, young Timothy or the young man, Timothy. We don't know exactly how much younger he was than Paul. I was reading this morning that some scholars think it could be as much as a 30 year age difference. So uh, we know that he was a lot younger than Paul. Also, we know for sure that his father was a Greek, was Greek. Uh, it is also assumed that he was an unbeliever. We don't exactly know that, but the way it's stated in Scripture, it sort of implies that he was an unbeliever. We also know that his mother and his grandmother were Jewish women who had come to faith in Christ. So they were followers. They were Jewish Christians who had come to follow Christ. We first meet Timothy in Acts chapter 16. It tells us there that Paul met Timothy and his family in Lystra and that Timothy was well thought of by the Christians there. So that Paul, uh, I guess, was impressed with Timothy and wanted to take him along with him on his missionary journey. So we know that Timothy traveled with Paul. He worked alongside of Paul. He was mentored by Paul. He was even imprisoned with Paul. There were some, some letters that Paul wrote from prison that Timothy is there with him. And we also know that later, after uh, years had passed and Timothy had grown and matured and was, was an adult and, and had proved himself as a good leader, that Paul left Timothy in charge of the church in Ephesus. So Paul traveled on and left Timothy there to pastor that church. Well, in addition to these things that we know about Paul, or excuse me, not Paul, but Timothy, it's also hinted at in Scripture that Timothy had an issue with fear, with being timid, maybe a lack of self-confidence. And let me share some of those verses with you that, that seem to indicate that. The verse that we've been focusing on from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, why would Paul remind Timothy that God has not given us a spirit of fear if that was not an issue for Timothy? Also in that same chapter, Paul wrote, I remind you to fan into flames the gift of God which is in you. So that seems to indicate that maybe Paul felt that Timothy had some sort of spiritual gift or something that he was not using to its fullest capacity. And then a, a verse or two later, in verse 8, Paul wrote, Do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. So again, it seems to indicate that Timothy might have been ashamed or that Paul felt that Timothy was ashamed of, of the, the good news of Christ or the fact that Paul was in prison. 
And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 10, Paul wrote, When Timothy comes, see to it that he has nothing to fear while he is with you. And then in verse 11, no one should treat him with contempt. So that's a very interesting verse. It's almost as if Paul is saying now, you know, Timothy, he's a little unsure of himself. So, uh, you know, you all be nice to him. You be kind to him. Uh, take it easy on him. So, you know, of course, we'll never know for sure exactly what kind of person Timothy was or, or, or what challenges he faced. But, but there does seem to be some evidence that he dealt with fear in his life. So today I want to share something else that Paul wrote to Timothy that I think is good advice for anyone who struggles with lack of confidence, um, lack of uh, feeling like you're inadequate, uh, fearfulness, insecurity, anything like that. I think this is a good passage for anyone who might be in that situation. This is in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. And Paul wrote this to Timothy, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. So it sounds like to me in this verse, Paul is saying to Timothy, Don't let anybody ever look down on you or, or make you think that you are not enough. And don't you yourself ever believe that you are not enough? But it's as if Paul is saying to him, you can't control what other people think. People are going to think what they think. They're going to say what they're going to say. You can only control you. So you work on yourself and you control your own actions. So it's like Paul is saying, you make it your goal to let your light shine by the way you talk, by the things you say, by the way you act, by the way you interact with other people, just by the way you live out your faith. You be a good example. No matter what anyone else says or anyone else does, that's your job. That's what you need to work on. So I think these are good words to live by. It's, it's as if Paul is telling not just Timothy, but all of us. You be the best you that you can be by the grace of God. And don't worry about those things you can't control. Don't worry what other people say or what other people think. So I think as I was reflecting on this, I felt like there's an application to this, a very timely application. We are in the midst of very challenging times, painful times, hurtful times, chaotic times, emotionally charged times, and so many people are hurting over the events of the last week, and not just the last week, but the last month. And I confess that when I hear and I read or, or see it on the internet about acts of racism and violence and rioting, that my heart hurts. But also, I, I confess that I, I feel helpless. I think, what can I do? How can I make a difference? How can I be part of the solution rather than being part of the problem by just doing nothing? And I confess that it would be easy to let fear or feelings of inadequacy just cause me to do nothing. So, Going back to what I said earlier, going back to the passage we're focusing on today, I can't control others, but I can control myself. I can be an example to others during this very tumultuous time by my words, by my actions, by my attitudes, by how I conduct myself, and by how I live out my faith. So you may say, well, what does that look like? Well, I can educate myself about racism and inequality and privilege. I can uh, support organizations that promote reconciliation and unity. I can talk with people whose life experience is very different than mine because of the color of their skin. And when I talk, I can when I talk to them and ask them to talk to me and help me to understand their perspective, I can really listen so that I can understand 
a different perspective than my own. And I can um, ask God to show me where there is racism in me. And when God answers that prayer, I can humbly and honestly repent. So I can't control others, but I can control me. So that's what I, will, I want to work on, and I encourage you to do the same. Will you pray with me? O oh God of grace and God of glory, in these volatile times, help us to be light and life and love to those around us. In all we do, in all we say. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. Well, goodbye, guys. Have a great day. Talk to you soon.